Hello and welcome back to the lab. In this video I figured we'd take a look at one of the newer, edi newest additions to the bench. A Mrs. Zen. Mrs. Zen? Mrs. Wizard? Oh, she can figure out what she wants to be called. You guys will meet her probably in a little bit depending on how the subscriber count goes. Has asked me to do some projects for her to take some things out to some games that she does. And this is going to require working with some batteries and a few other things. So lipo packs, maybe some nickel metal hydride, and playing around with batteries. That, uh, at her request, we're adding two pieces of equipment to the bench. One of them came in today. The other one will be here probably early next week because it wasn't in stock. First one that came in was a DC electronic load. So we're going to do some load testing of some batteries, some runtime stuff, some things like that. Also, it was pointed out to me in one of my very early videos when I did a video on the 100 volt power supply that I did not test any of the power supplies under load. That is 100% true. I didn't really have a good way to load the power supplies at that point. However, that changes today. So, the uh, this particular electronic load is the 2380. It'll do 120 volts at 60 amps, not at the same time. <laughs> Or else this uh, this load's 250 watt specification would be blown out of the water. Uh, but it can do 60 amps of current at or 120 volts, depending on as long as we don't go over 250 watts. So this this little guy can dissipate 250 watts, which is actually kind of impressive for its size. Front panel is pretty simple: keypad, big binding posts, small knob. We have constant current, constant voltage, constant resistance, and constant power tests that we can run on devices. On the back, USB, which we'll probably be using in the short term. I do want to start doing some things with GPIB. I'm uh, starting to do a dive into what it's going to take to set up GPIB for the bench. Um, especially with the 7854, a couple of the spectrum analyzers, things like that, uh, the DSA. I'd love to be able to pull waveforms out, save waveforms to the computer, get data out, do some data logging, all that fun stuff. Uh, so I'm definitely looking into a GPIB network. I do have the two meters and the scope hooked up to Ethernet. So the 6500 and the 7510, those are both Ethernet enabled. Um, haven't done much. I haven't done any on camera with uh, data logging yet or not. If that's something that everyone's interested in, let me know. I'll see about making a video on it. I do plan on using the sense ports for this. So wherever this ends up on the bench, I haven't decided exactly where it's going to go yet. Probably be off to the side. And then I'll put uh, some heavy-duty cables, cables coming in. And... Um, Give it some attachment point or give some attachment points and allow me to hook up the remote sense. Until I get the GPIB up and running, I'll have to have it within a USB cable length of a computer just to get data in and out. Now, in terms of this unit, um, this is an older Keithley. I uh, I did get this refurbished. This is not new. That's why it's mi it's not missing some of the new parts. However. The plastic film was on there when I got it and everything, so I did get the binding post covers that I took off because the test leads that I got with it didn't work well with the binding post. So I will figure out a permanent wiring solution, things like that, but I have to think about that for a little bit. These are... Massive binding posts. Version 1.1, so may see about updating the firmware for it. See if we can give it some new firmware. But let's test it. So we're going to set constant current mode. Hook this up. This power supply is supposed to be... 1 to 100 volts DC, 
at one amp. It's currently outputting 1.9 volts. Turn the load on. And we will ask it for one amp. There we go. Let's crank it up to about 20 volts. meter is actually pretty accurate in the power supply. So essentially now we just let it sit, let it burn. I'll run it for a long time, make sure the power supply regulates just fine. Since I got it, I'll probably run all my, uh, all of the power designs, power supplies through a, uh, through some testing and do some load testing since we now have a load and just make sure they're working okay. Moving over to the 100 volt supply. There we go, 20 volts, one amp. So we'll just let that run, make sure nothing burns down, nothing exciting happens, and we'll see where we go from there. Power supply testing is kind of, or long-term power supply testing is kind of boring. You set it up, put a load on it, and then hope nothing exciting happens. Well, got the uh, 1010T out. The other two, the other two supplies checked out okay, but at one amp, looks like it's regulating like crap. Mm, so it's swinging about ten volts. Oh, there it goes. So it's swinging all over the place. Problems in the ten ten. Now that we have a load, let's see if we can't figure those out. A little bit more. I turned the load off. See, it's not lit, but the power supply isn't even regulating with the load off. So, definitely just developed a problem. Let me get that cracked open. We'll take a look. Okay, I've got the capacitor board redone. I'm ready for the first power up. Have not turned this thing on yet, so let's see if it lets out the magic smoke. We're drawing about a point eighty five watts or point eighty five amps. So this is drawing about six point six watts. Yeah, let's go for broke. Definitely going to need a recal after this. It's moving a lot slower. Comes down pretty quick. Uh, let me tighten this knob up. This is slipping on the shaft just a little bit. So let me tighten that up. And then I'll hook the load back up and we'll see how it goes. Well, I'm still working on the uh, 1010. And the output's doing something really weird. It's Voltage is coming up very slowly. It's not, uh, won't go to full. It'll stop at about 80 volts. And then it just kind of stops. So the supply doesn't output any current. Kind of scratching my head. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but. We may have found the problem. This wire should be in this node. It slipped out while I was soldering. So I'll have to get that reattached and then we'll see if the supply works. Okay, moment of truth. It either works or blows up.
Okay, well, it's regulating well. Will it go to 100? We'll end up there. All right, let's check it with a load. All right, here we go. We'll give it 50 volts. Ask it for a half an amp. And it's regulating. Oh, very cool. So it's in, it's regulating. Um, can let it burn in for a little bit. Let's ask for... Three quarters of an amp. It will give it to me. Regulating much better than it was yesterday. Uh, yesterday it was swinging tens of volts. So the caps were giving up the ghost. Let's see if it'll give me a full amp. It will give me a full amp. Very cool. And it's nice and solid. So, yeah. So the caps were caps were bad. They were leaky, causing the problems. This doesn't have any digital circuitry in it. All the regulations done analog. So there is no comparators or anything. There's no ICs in the thing. It's all it's it's transistor based and 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 uh, old school. So, but it works. I mean, it's, it's uh, I need a grunty 100-volt power supply to work on UPS batteries and things like that, charge big battery banks. Well, up to the UPS batteries I work on are up to 72 volts, so charge big, beefy 72-volt batteries, and now I have an amp of charging. It's regulating nicely. We'll let it burn in for a while, but I don't expect there to be any other issues. All right, I've left the... Power supply running for a while into the load. Everything's good. We're a little bit higher on the voltage here. I've noticed that this particular power supply, the voltage increase coincides to line voltage increases. So the line's fluctuating a little bit, going up and down. About 0.5 volts on the line, because we were at because when I started the testing, we were at 16.2. We're up to 17.3. So the scope or the scope. Well, power supply is regulating very well it's just not decoupled from the line very well because it's an analog supply so i'm happy with that i got to see if i can dig up a uh, service manual for it because there are some adjustments to do now that we have a load i can actually adjust the power supply and get it back to specification not even sure it's out of spec right now but batteries won't care about a half a volt one way or the other so that's not a problem uh, i check the Big power caps in the bottom, they actually tested okay. So given that they're being run 50% below their rated voltage and their leakage wasn't bad, left those in. I did end up doing all of the smaller capacitors on the, on the tag board. They were bad, and they were showing signs of stress, like just age. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but the end of that capacitor is pretty cracked. These were growing these are growing some kind of fungus. Let's see if it'll focus. These have they they're sl they feel they feel slimy and they're growing something. 
looks like a mold or a fungus or something, so good to get those out of there. But it looks like the power supply is back to rights. When the uh, mail delivers the other unit that was ordered at the same time that this one was, I will, uh, I will bring everybody back and we'll take a look at the other fun toys that are on the way to the lab. Well, I was planning on having a second addition to the lab to show on the channel, but that's going to have to wait. I called my vendor today and I got the disappointing news that um, I am out six weeks on the power supply. So I'm going to have to wait. Um, unfortunately, not through the magic of the camera this time. So I will be doing another video on the power supply when it comes in. If battery testing and some battery evaluation is something that everyone uh, thinks would be valuable, let me know. When the gear gets here, I am more than happy to uh, do some testing and have the lab done. So looking forward to some suggestions on that, if there is any. And we'll keep diving down the rabbit hole. So I will find some things to uh, work on in the meantime. The DC load worked very well. And we got the... Uh, power designs finally finished up and fixed. So it, it actually went bad on camera because when I tested it and used it last to charge a uh, Liebert battery, um, it worked fine and it just died during the video. So thanks for stopping by and I will see you guys in the next video and down in the comments.